The following program was made possible in part by a grant from Abbott Laboratories and in cooperation with Driscoll Children's Hospital and Del Mar College in Corpus Christi, Texas. The purpose of this video is to remind parents of children with insulin-dependent diabetes that any illness can affect blood sugar and ketone levels. Our goal is to help you make the right treatment choices during an illness. This information is not intended to replace your healthcare team or doctor's advice. In any matters involving your health care, you are urged to consult your doctor and your diabetes health care team. Young people with diabetes are generally quite healthy and are rarely sick. Sick day rules are treatment guidelines to use when they have high blood sugar levels and elevated ketones. During this tape, we will discuss the effects of illness on the body's need for insulin and how the body responds to an illness. We will then discuss seven steps to use whenever an illness is present. Please store this tape in an easy to find location and replay it as often as needed. For persons with diabetes who require insulin, there's always an increased risk of developing high blood sugars and elevated ketones during any illness. During an illness, the body's need for insulin will generally increase, not decrease. This is because most illnesses make the body release very strong stress hormones. These stress hormones block the effectiveness of insulin, which in turn raise the blood sugar levels. People without diabetes can make plenty of insulin, even when sick. The only way that a person with insulin-dependent diabetes can raise his or her insulin levels is by taking extra insulin. That's why it's extremely important not to miss any insulin shots during an illness. Low insulin levels prevent the body from using blood sugar properly. This has two effects. First, blood sugar levels will increase. Second, the body begins to burn fat as an alternate source of energy. Ketones are the acid waste byproducts caused by this process of fat burning. Too little insulin in the body, combined with the extra stress hormones caused by illness, causes fat to break down uncontrollably, like a wildfire. Due to their acidic nature, high levels of ketones will change the chemical balance of the bloodstream. This results in a tired, sickly feeling, nausea, stomach ache, and eventually vomiting. The body tries to rid itself of these ketones, but has only two ways to do this. One way is through the lungs. You might have noticed that a person with high ketones may have a fruity or sweet smell to their breath and may have an abnormal, deep breathing pattern. The other way the body rids itself of ketones is through the kidneys, which remove ketones by flushing them out into the urine. High blood sugar causes increased urination, which rapidly removes valuable water from the body. You can compensate for this increased loss by drinking more fluids such as water or sugar-free drinks. However, if ketone levels build up, the nauseous feeling which often accompanies high ketones may cause a person to drink less, and perhaps to vomit. As dehydration gets worse, the ketone level in the blood increases, which causes even more vomiting. If not treated early, high blood sugars and elevated ketones can develop into a condition called diabetic ketoacidosis, also called DKA. DKA is a very serious condition and can cause injury, or even death, if it isn't treated promptly. The best treatment for DKA is prevention by following these sick day rules. DKA is first brought on by extreme loss of body water, which makes DKA a special form of dehydration. Dehydration occurs more quickly when the person can't drink without throwing up. Early control of the nausea that often occurs when ketones begin to accumulate in the blood helps to prevent DKA since it allows the person to take in what they need most, water. To manage sick days properly, you will need the following. Blood sugar and ketone testing equipment, such as the Precision Extra Advanced Diabetes Management System, non-carbohydrate containing fluids, rapid or fast-acting insulin, anti-nausea medicine, as recommended by your doctor, and a good understanding of these seven sick day rules and how to follow them. Step 1. 
monitor blood sugar levels carefully and frequently during any illness. Blood sugar and ketones should be tested more often during any illness, usually every two to four hours. Step two, measure ketones frequently when blood sugars are over 300 milligrams per deciliter and continue doing measurements at regular intervals until ketones are within normal levels. There are now two ways to measure ketones at home. One of the oldest methods is by measuring ketones in a urine sample using a ketone dipstick. The newest method uses the Precision Extra Testing System. This system measures beta-hydroxybutyrate, a primary ketone released into the bloodstream when insulin action is inadequate. Ketones get detected in the blood first, then the urine. This makes the Precision Extra System superior to urine ketone testing. Normally, blood ketone levels should measure below 0.6 millimoles per liter. Levels between 0.6 and 1.5 millimoles per liter require close attention to sick day guidelines. Levels between 1.6 and 3.0 millimoles per liter usually mean that the person needs to consider taking additional insulin. Measurement of the blood sugar and ketone levels provide crucial information during any illness and should usually be tested every two to four hours along with blood sugar testing. In most persons with well-controlled insulin-dependent diabetes, it is the balance between food eaten and insulin taken that determines how well blood sugar levels are controlled. However, it's a lack of sufficient insulin in the body that causes ketones to appear. True, excessive eating by itself does cause blood sugars to be high, but simply overeating will not result in ketones. One of the most common causes of ketones is an omitted insulin dose, either by accident or in some cases intentionally. Other possible causes are listed on the screen. You should always remember to test for ketones anytime blood sugars are over 300 milligrams per deciliter. Step three, drink plenty of fluids to prevent dehydration and flush excess sugar and ketones from the body. The primary goal of sick day management is to avoid losing too much body water, better known as dehydration. Remember, high blood sugars cause excessive urination, which can cause dehydration. These losses are corrected by drinking more fluids. The best fluids are water and non-carbonated sugar-free drinks. Soda pop is not recommended because the carbonation tends to increase the risk of vomiting. Some physicians may recommend Pedialyte in the young child Equalite in the adolescent or adult, or sport drinks in limited amounts to treat dehydration. The carbohydrates in these drinks are used as an energy source so that the body doesn't have to rely on fat breakdown for energy. However, extra insulin may be needed to control the increase in blood sugar that occurs. The amount of insulin to take is determined by your doctor. The recommended amount of fluids to drink will change according to the person's size. For every 20-minute period, a child under 40 pounds should drink 4 to 6 ounces. A child 40 to 80 pounds should try to drink 6 to 8 ounces. A child over 80 pounds or any adult should drink 8 to 10 ounces every 20 minutes. It's best to take liquids in small sips rather than large gulps. Taken too quickly, large amounts of fluid upset the stomach. A 5 cc syringe without a needle may be used to administer fluids to a younger child. Ensuring proper intake of fluids is crucial to preventing dehydration. Step four, treat nausea when it occurs to prevent vomiting. Management of nausea is essential. If nausea results in vomiting, which cannot be controlled, it becomes necessary to contact your doctor or diabetes team for further instructions. One choice for managing nausea at home is the use of over-the-counter treatments such as Emetrol. Your doctor may have already prescribed an anti-nausea medicine or suppository to use during illness, and this should be used as directed. Remember, controlling nausea is crucial. You cannot treat high blood sugars with ketones at home if vomiting occurs and you can't hold down liquids. So, if nausea and vomiting can't be controlled after a reasonable effort, call your doctor or diabetes team, or take the person to get immediate medical attention. Step five, don't miss any usually scheduled insulin injections. During any illness, always take your scheduled insulin doses. Withholding insulin is not a good idea. Without enough insulin, the body cannot properly use blood sugar for energy and prevent ketones from being formed. Step six, 
Take extra insulin when needed and as determined by blood sugar and ketone levels and your doctor's recommendations. During an illness, it is important to make sure the body has enough insulin to fight off the effects of the stress hormones produced by illness and bring high blood sugar levels down. You must note two things to decide if it is necessary or appropriate to take supplemental rapid or fast-acting insulin. These are the blood sugar level and the ketone level. There are several ways to determine the amount of extra insulin to take. Use the method your doctor recommends. Any extra insulin is usually of the rapid or fast-acting variety. Fast insulin action is key to shutting off the production of ketones and bringing blood sugar levels under control, which in turn reduces water loss by reducing excessive urination. Rapid or fast-acting insulin is often considered necessary whenever the blood sugar level is 300 mg per deciliter or greater and ketone measurements using the Precision Extra system are elevated in blood above 1.6 millimoles per liter. In most cases, high blood sugar and ketones both must be present to consider an extra insulin dose for sick day purposes. Here is an example. The blood sugar level is 320 mg per deciliter and the ketones are greater than 1.6 millimoles per liter by the Precision Extra testing system. Your doctor may recommend a supplemental dose of rapid or fast-acting insulin, along with frequent sips of fluids and frequent blood testing. However, if only blood sugar is high and ketones are less than 1.6 millimoles per liter, the decision as to whether to take extra insulin will depend on what your doctor or diabetes team has advised you to do. In most cases, all that is needed is an increase in fluid intake with frequent testing. Timing of the insulin dose is important. If high blood sugar and elevated ketones are discovered just before a normally scheduled dose of rapid or fast-acting insulin, then that dose should be taken or an increase in the amount of that insulin dose may be needed, depending on the instructions you've been given by your doctor or diabetes team. After taking insulin, the person should eat as usual and should drink more water to flush out ketones. After two hours, the blood sugar and ketone level should be rechecked. If the blood sugar is greater than 300 mg per deciliter and ketones are still elevated, then another single dose of rapid or fast-acting insulin may be needed and the entire process repeated in another two hours until either blood sugars fall below 300 mg per deciliter or ketones fall below 1.6 millimoles per liter. If you are unable to control blood sugars and ketones after several additional injections of insulin, call your doctor or diabetes team. Make sure that the insulin source you use has not been damaged by exposure to extreme temperatures and has not been used for longer than a month. If you suspect damaged or outdated insulin, throw it away and use fresh insulin. There are several ways to determine how much extra insulin to take. One way is to take the equivalent of 10 to 20 percent of the total daily insulin dose as rapid or fast-acting insulin. You can also base the dose on the weight. This chart lists the amounts of extra insulin to take based on body weight. Remember, as long as an illness is present, high blood sugar and ketones can return as quickly as they disappeared. So, continue to monitor glucose and ketone levels frequently through the entire illness and drink plenty of fluids. Step 7. If you ever have questions about what to do, call your doctor or diabetes team for guidance. Occasionally, a person may have nausea and vomiting, but have a target range blood sugar level or perhaps even a low range sugar reading. In these cases, the thing to do is to maintain good fluid intake and prevent low blood sugar. Carbohydrates can be taken in the liquid form, preferably in small, frequent sips. This liquid carbohydrate exchange list provides some good examples of what to eat. Treat nausea as recommended by your doctor and check blood sugar often. Most importantly, never omit a scheduled insulin dose in this situation. If ever in doubt, call your doctor or diabetes team. High blood sugar and elevated ketones can occur in a child using the insulin pump very rapidly. It's crucial that blood sugar levels be checked two hours after any infusion site change and that ketones get checked anytime blood sugar levels are greater than 300 mg per deciliter. High blood sugar and elevated ketones can occur in a child using the insulin pump very rapidly. It's crucial that blood sugar levels be checked two hours after any infusion site change and that ketones get checked anytime blood sugar levels are greater than 300 mg per deciliter. Other than severe illness, 
Other possible explanations for high blood sugars with ketones when using the insulin pump include 1. Improper or inadequate infusion site insertion 2. Air bubbles in the infusion tubing 3. Insulin leakage from tubing 4. Outdated or temperature damaged insulin 5. Mechanical or electronic problem with the pump or 6. Improper patient programming of the pump. Any of these pump problems can also be present during the illness. Now let's summarize the sick day rules. Monitor blood sugar levels carefully and frequently during any illness. Measure ketones frequently when blood sugars are over 300 mg per deciliter and continue doing measurements at regular intervals until ketones are within normal levels. Drink plenty of fluids to prevent dehydration and flush excess sugar and ketones from the body. Treat nausea when it occurs to prevent vomiting. Don't miss any usually scheduled insulin injections. Take extra insulin when needed and as determined by blood sugar and ketone levels and your doctor's recommendations. Call for help from your doctor or diabetes team whenever you are in doubt about what to do.